G'day everyone, welcome to another video by myself, Andrew DFT. And of course, today's video is the part one tutorial for the Titanfall 2 Pulse Blade helmet. Now, of course, this is the helmet I produced for my own personal uh, costume for the Pulse Blade. This was done prior to the game's actual launch. And of course, a lot of you guys really liked it and really wanted me to do a tutorial, at least for the helmet, so you guys could go off and complete the costume yourself. So now, of course, I've finally got around to it. The one on my right is the one that we'll be building from the tutorial today. It's all 100% made of EVA foam. This one is 99% EVA foam with a tiny bit of styrofoam added. Hence why you could probably see a kind of difference in the way the detail has been managed. But that's because I wanted this to be perfect and the best I could possibly do for that photo shoot. But by no means does that mean you have to stick to EVA foam for this. You're more than welcome to go off and use any materials to achieve some better design on this that you wish. I'm here to provide a base step for you guys to achieve this helmet so you guys can take it a step further and add any kind of personalization, customization, and additional features that you'd like. Now for this tutorial, you will of course need templates. Now you can obtain those for free in a PDF via the link in the description box below. They've all been made by myself and they've been tested clearly to make sure that this actually works. So. It should be good to go for the tutorial. And fear not, this helmet is relatively large. It gives plenty of space for anyone who has either a bigger or a smaller head than mine, so it'll be up to you to put in some padding to get the perfect fit required. Now if I was to rate this tutorial, I would give it a 7 out of 10. It does require a bit of skill on your part, but nothing you guys haven't done and proven you can do in previous tutorials. But otherwise, let's jump right in. Alright, so jumping right in, what you're going to do is go ahead and print out the templates. And then what you can do is cut them all out. You can then place them onto a piece of EVA foam, luckily we're not going to be using too much, and make sure they have some space so that we can cut it. Then we can grab these two pieces you can see on screen and transfer them onto the foam. You can then grab the middle piece also, and then flip the other two to make them all splayed out like that. Making sure you flip the template to ensure we get the left and the right hand side. Then taking a nice sharp craft blade, go ahead and cut out all the individual segments so that way they're free of the main foam core. Then what we're going to do is what you can see on screen here marked out with this dashed line is you notice we have this beveled edge. This is going to be something you need to pay attention to because what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and cut a, an internal 45 degree angle straight into the foam heading towards the texture side. This is going to allow us to piece the foam sections together to allow for the nice bends and the curves and the general construction of this helmet. You'll also notice on this middle section we have a beveled line so we need to go through and cut those out as well. We'll do it on both sides on the vertical straight edge so that way we have them sitting nicely. We can then heat up the foam because we obviously have to using a heat gun to allow it to kind of morph and bend to the shapes we want it. Obviously the back of the helmet does has this nice kind of curved effect so we need to achieve that out of the foam. Then what you can do is take some hot glue once it's nice and heated up and glue these individual segments together. Because we've added in that bevel line they should slot in perfectly and you should have this nice kind of terraced effect meaning the spine of this section sits a bit below those edges. Now we're going to take the other piece that we initially cut out and we're going to glue that in as well. It should slot in perfectly as we already cut a beveled edge on the previous piece. So. Yeah. Now what you can do is grab the template you can currently see on screen and we're going to transfer that on. So you're going to need to flip it left and right to complete the whole design and then you can do it with the other piece as well, giving us the top and the lower jaw section. Now what we're going to do is we're going to grab the templates, we're going to slowly break apart the detail that's already on them to create some of the detail on the actual helmet. To do that we'll cut off this template section you can see marked here and we're going to lay it onto the foam, draw it out and then flip it to complete the other side. Then what you'll notice is on these templates we have more dashed edges indicating that it's a beveled edge so we'll go in and complete those as well. Remember it's about a 45 degree internal cut heading towards the texture or the non-facing side giving us that nice sloped edge allowing us to combine these pieces to make the helmet. Now you'll notice here that we do have a beveled edge here of course that would be a bit hard to do but what this is is actually a line we're going to do on the inside to allow it to bend. So what you can do is then grab and place it on the non-facing side, the texture side, and draw in that line that links the two corners together as marked there. As long as you repeat what you can see on screen, you shouldn't have an issue. The reason why we're doing this here is what we're going to do is we're actually going to cut 90 degrees halfway through the foam, and then we're going to cut in 45 degrees on both sides where we just made the incision. This is going to allow that kind of hinge-like effect, but remember, it's important you don't cut all the way through the foam, you're just cutting about halfway through the foam. You shouldn't even see any marks come through on the other side. Then what you can do is you can apply some heat to this section, allowing it to be more malleable, put some hot glue into those seams, and then bend it. 
hopefully you can uh, use the larger piece on the flat surface of the table so that way you get the nice straight edges but it still gets that nice curve that you need. Then what you should be able to do is because we've already beveled those external edges is just glue them into position to the lower section of the helmet. Now the lower the section of the helmet is of course marked out with the kind of under circle parts so hopefully you can make sure you do that correctly. So once that piece is dried, you should have the helmet looking like this, and it should be rather symmetrical and not have any weird uh, demorphing going on, but if it looks like that, we can continue. Now what we'll do is, of course, we'll grab the top jaw section, and we'll move into actually applying some detail to this, and then of course applying it above the lower jaw we just completed. So what we'll do first is cut out the internal middle section, and we'll apply these lines on. Remember to flip the templates, that way you get those two laid in there properly, and we're actually going to flip the whole piece over and do it on the back. This is of course is going to be like that hinge we just did before, so cutting in on a 90 degree and then in on a 45. But then of course you can go break apart the template and lay in all those other pieces. I don't need to show you each step, but just throw those in as well. Now you will notice here on the template we do have another beveled edge, so we will go and lay that in on the corners there or the edge sides of there. Remember it's a 45 degree slicing through to the textured side. Once you've of course completed that you can go in and do the hinge effect, so cutting in on a 90 degree angle and then coming back in on a 45 degree to make sure that it has that space to bend. Then of course take the heat gun to it and make sure it's well heated so that way we can get the hot glue into the seams and allow it to bend. You will need to hold it there for quite some time just to make sure that the glue has set before you work on the other piece just to make sure it holds its position and gives us that nice curve we need to obviously match what we've already done for the front lower jaw of this helmet. Once you think you've got it pretty good, you can then just glue it into position. It should slot in almost perfectly, but rather than sitting it on top, we're actually going to sit it just in front. It has been designed to be a bit longer, so it should naturally want to sit in front, but it gives it this nice terraced effect, which you can currently see, and it's a bit stepped. So if you can get it looking like that, you shouldn't have any problem, but it, like I said, it should just slot in perfectly as it's a bit bigger than the previous piece. Okay, now onto circles. So what you're going to do is take the circle template and make four of them. We're going to have two on each side. So once we've got uh, them cut out, you can take two, just two, and you're going to see the template. We can see we have a beveled edge obviously indicated here. So you can cut the internal part of the uh, circle template out and then transfer it on dead center. So that way we get this nice perimeter line marked out here. You can then go ahead and add a depth line. We're only going to do this a few millimeters, maybe a quarter of the way into the foam, make sure you wrap it around evenly, and then what we're going to do is grab a very sharp craft blade and prop it up above something so that way you have a bit of height, and you're actually going to bevel across the distance. Now it shouldn't be too hard as the distance we've got between the depth line and the beveled edge isn't severe, but just take your time in cutting around it. Now what you're going to then do is, before we progress, is cut out these overarching bridge sections. These are of course a little piece of design that sits above the circles which we've just carved and they should hold it all together. So what you can do of course is go ahead and glue the circles in. Now I have made a mistake, I accidentally just glued in the one. What you will need to do is grab one of the blank circles and then glue one of the beveled circles on top to make it two circles thick, giving us the nice extra thickness because if you did it at the one you can currently see, it doesn't give the 3D effect we need. We need to actually go back like I'm doing now and glue those two pieces in so that way it sits a bit more above that arch piece. I apologize for that mistake but I'm noting it now so that way you guys can adjust it so you shouldn't have an issue. So moving on, we'll now do the back section. What you can do is grab the template of course and then go ahead and lay it onto the foam. Being sure to flip the template to extend the design and make sure it is the entire length. What you can do then is cut it free, so make sure it is away from the foam, and now you will notice we have an indicated bevel line, so be sure to go in and do that as well, with a 45 degree cut towards the texture side. Then simply just add some heat with some hot glue, uh, sorry, with a heat gun, and then some hot glue to put it into place, and it should slot in pretty awesomely because of the beveled edges you've just done will help put it there. So that's it. Of course, now we've got to go off and do part two where you can see already where we're gonna start really bridging up some of these detail forming the rest of the tip of the helmet and putting on these additional pieces as well as some up here in the front. You'll also be noting that there isn't a visor installed at the moment. Don't worry, there will be for part two. I will go over and teach you guys how to achieve that so you can have something sitting in there nice that will look relatively cool. But otherwise, let's wrap this thing up. Thank you very much for watching and taking your time out of your day. For those of you who are new to the channel, consider subscribing. You might need to for part two and I also have a lot of cool content on the way. But all that's left to do now is go and click on that part too. Thank you very much for watching. Catch you later.